Hey, what's up, guys? This is Elo Speaks back here with another video. So, um, I wanted to make a video about Scotty Pippen, the whole situation that's going on earlier, but I wanted to wait for more details to come out as regards to the situation with him, his spat with Kevin Durant, and then recently he did an interview with Dan Patrick talking about uh, Phil Jackson and his time with the Bulls, and also Michael Jordan and the Last Dance documentary. But I want to start first with the LeBron James and Kevin Durant uh, commentary. Um, when he was doing the interview for GQ, he did make a statement on saying that Kevin Durant has not surpassed LeBron James, and he also detailed that um, LeBron James would have found a way to win that game seven versus the Milwaukee Bucks, where the Brooklyn Nets had uh, fell short of beating them in a seven game series in the semifinals. Um, my opinion of that is. We don't know how LeBron James would have won that series because we already got an indication of how LeBron James would have played at his current state on the West against the Phoenix Suns. And he fell very short of that without even making it to a game seven, let alone putting his team in a position to make the game winning shot in order to go to the next round. And on top of that, LeBron James lost in the first round while Kevin Durant lost in the second round. Now, granted, they both lost and they're at home and watching the playoffs. But again, you can't compare the two because, yes, LeBron James has done stuff like that before. But his team, for the most part, while it was in the Eastern Conference, was healthy outside of that 2015 season when Kevin Love had went down. But again, Kevin Durant was playing with a hobble James Harden and Kyrie Irving went down in game three. Give him a full healthy team, it would have beat the Bucks. Um, most people already know that, so I'm not gonna go in too much into that. But those are my statements on regards to that. I felt like that was uh, uh, inappropriate, and Kevin Durant responded to him, rightfully so, bringing up his past failures in a 1994 season when he decided not to go in the game because Phil Jackson didn't draw a player for him to shoot the game winning shot and gave it to Ku coach to make the game winning shot and other a plethora of other uh, stuff that Kevin Durant detailed which was true to say how Scott, uh, Scotty Pippen fell short for his team now we already know how Kevin Durant is people, a lot of people like to say that he's sensitive and he has rabbit ears me I, I see it as he's protecting himself especially when the media na media narratives are spiraling out of control about you, say hi, your rings don't count, you're a coward for going to 73 and 19, you're sensitive, you're weak, softest move in history, cupcake, so forth, so forth, I don't care about none of that. If somebody's spreading lies, like a la Shadow Sharp, saying that you said this particular quote when you did it, then you have the right to defend yourself. Now, if it's something little, and like people, trolls are just talking in the media. Like or when Kevin Durant made his burner accounts, I didn't agree with that. I thought that was a little too much, especially for a man of his caliber. But again, if it's somebody that's Shannon Sharp, Skip Bayless, Stephen A. Smith, Max Kettleman, uh, Colin Coward, saying, misquoting you, saying lies, spreading rumors, false allegations, so forth and so forth, you know, being a fake journalist, then he has every right to call them out on it. And I have no problem with that. I actually love that he responds to his critics and got them squirming in their boots because it shows that he's not afraid of them because the whole uh, reporter versus the player relationship is really getting toxic to the point where media pundits are spinning the narratives and twisting words around to fit their narratives to spin their own story so that way they can get clicks and stuff like that and it's kind of pathetic but again that's a, that's a story for a whole nother day as regards to Scotty Pippen and Kevin Durant spat that was un, that was un, like I was unfortunate it happened but again that, like Scotty Pippen had no reason to even bring up LeBron James as regards to that situation Kevin Durant lost yes he did make the game winning shot but you know that, that was unnecessary on his part to even bring that up, especially when you had past failures, that was even worse than that. One thing I can say about Kevin Durant, he never quit on his team. 
that's one thing I can say. Now, we get to the next point. The next point of the matter was uh, the whole... Because right now, he's coming out with a book. And when he was coming out with a book, he you know, he wanted to give his quote-unquote truth about what happened during his years playing with the Bulls. It's supposed to be a, a response to the Michael Jordan's Last Dance documentary, giving his take and his quote-unquote opinions on what happened during his career playing with the Chicago Bulls. And he's gonna he's basically gonna trash Jordan. And I don't I'm just gonna keep it a buck right there because I could go into the minutia of everything, but he's basically gonna trash Jordan. He's gonna say that in the book he's gonna say that he's the reason that the Bulls even was in an opportunity to win two championships, even though in ninety four you had an opportunity to try to do that without Jordan and you fell short. And on top of that He's going to try to also say he was the main focal point of the team. He's going to try to say that he was just as much as a number one or the leader of the team than Michael Jordan, which is not true. But, you know, it's his book. He can put whatever he wants in it. It's his opinion. Um, that's gonna. That's how I'm going to take it. I'm not going to take anything he says. Pertaining to Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls, that's facts because I know that... There's some things he's going to leave out or there's some things he's going to be ashamed of as regards to telling the true side of what happened during his tenure with the Bulls, but I digress. As regards to that situation, anybody who watched The Last Dance saw Scottie Pippen true colors and how he operated and conducted himself. Not too good. Now, granted, there were great spots where Scottie Pippen did look good in The Last Dance, but um, a lot of it was him not being financially aware of financial contracts as regards to when he signed that long deal in the NBA. That was his first mistake. And then his second mistake was, you know, that 1994 season is always going to be held against him as regards to that. Uh, I don't. I don't think you should ever quit on your team, I, even though you're, even if you're, you're the number, you're the second guy after Michael Jordan, and they're not trying to play for you. It's about. It's not about you. It's about the team, and it's about winning the game. And that's where uh, Scottie Pippen ego got in front of him, got the better of him, and that's where he fell short. And my third reason, uh, third uh, critique of Scottie Pippen was that you know. He he took uh, he he knew that he had to take a uh, foot surgery, uh, some type of injury. I'm not gonna, I'm not particularly sure. I don't know if it was a foot surgery or knee surgery, but he had to take some type of surgery. And instead of getting that done in the off season, he did that in the beginning of the season, which was selfish on his part. And that just shows how much of a bad teammate he is because of that. Now, granted, I understand you in a, a really really bad contract. But you have to take some responsibility for that because you're the one who signed that contract. And the best thing to do is to honor that contract or get it reconstructed. Now, obviously, they're gonna, they weren't going to reconstruct the contract because they were trying to save money cap-wise so they could sign everyone. Even Michael Jordan didn't get paid his work. But the best thing you could have done is honor the contract and then do what you needed to do after it finishes and leave and then you can get your money. Now, it's easier said than done, but... The fact that you took foot surgery uh, right during the season and leaving your teammates hanging, that just shows how much selfish you are. And Jordan called him out on it, rightfully so. And he deserved to be called out for that situation. There's no reason you shouldn't, like, you're trying to, you're, you're at the top of the league in terms of winning the championships during that time. And you're, you know, you're, like, crippling your team by not showing up. The Bulls had a bad record at the time when he was out and then they started to win without him. And when they started to win without him, he could feel his stock starting to fall because they didn't feel like they need him anymore. And once they felt like they didn't need him anymore, he came right back into it and started playing. And then the Bulls kept pushing. And then they went out to win a championship during that 98 season. So uh, a lot of fair critiques on Scottie Pippen overall as a player. Now, recently on the Dan Patrick show, he was talking about <clears throat> the 94 season, one of the games, I think it was against the New York Knicks, that they were playing, and they drew up a play for Kukos to shoot the game with a shot, and Scottie Pippen didn't like that. And he called out Scott, uh, he called out uh, 
Phil Jackson on it by saying he should have gave that play to me because he felt like he was the second best player. And he also said he also indicated that there were a racial tension of making that decision for Phil Jackson to give the ball to Kukoc. And now, granted, Kukoc is a rookie in the game make, taking that shot. Um, my opinion on the matter, I think that you need a little bit more for you to insinuate that Phil Jackson is racist. Now, I'm not saying he's not racist. There were, there's indications of him making some subtle racial remarks not like anything hard where he's saying like the n-word and thing like that but there's there's is there are remarks of him like you know being subtly racist and i'm not i'm not gonna fully, fully blow say that he he's not racist but that claim that you're trying to say that he's racist was a weak claim and you need to substantiate that better in order for you to be like he's full-blown racist and just for you to say that i was there in a locker room that's not enough and that's gonna be hard for people to believe you moving forward with that because if you're going to be saying this person is this or that, you need to make sure you have, like, bona fide proof to substantiate your claims and say that this person is racist. Now, again, I don't I don't I don't care if Phil Jackson is racist or not. Me, personally, I, he probably is racist. Who, who knows? He probably is racist. But again, if you're going to make that claim, you better back it up with facts, irrefutable facts on top of that. He also brought up the writing a book about Kobe Bryant. And then got uh, leaving the team, and then coming back to coach him. As regards to that, uh, we are, everybody know that playing with Kobe Bryant, RIP him to him, but he was a difficult player to work with. A lot of teammates from the past of the 2000s had negative things to say about him because of how bad it was to play with him because of his style of play, and so far so far. But again, with that, in order um, for Kobe to win a championship, he needed Phil Jackson. He probably didn't want. He probably pushed Phil Jackson out so he could see if he could win. But he probably saw that he needed structure, and Phil Jackson brought that structure. So Phil Jackson ended up coming back, coaching him. They won two more championships. The rest was history. But for for Scottie Pippen to even bring that up and insinuate that it was just like puzzling to me. I mean, like the past two weeks of I guess Scottie Pippen going on his media tour. Um, trying to promote his book I, it's just some of the stuff he's saying is really outlandish and out there I understand he's trying to like create buzz and sell the book but bro like there's no reason for you to do that like he felt like he didn't get the respect that he deserves as a player and the way you carry yourself right now is this is the reason why you don't get the respect you're so ego driven by saying that you feel like you should have been a number one or you feel like you were one A or one B to Jordan, it, like you're losing sight of what was the purpose of playing with Michael Jordan on the team, what's to win the championship, what's to win for the team. Put your ego aside and understand the bigger picture. But you no, know, I could I could I guess from a ego's perspective, if people say that you're the second guy, you're Robin to Jordan's Batman, that could you know that could F with your confidence, that could F with your ego. People say that you know you're you're one a you're one b you're the beta to that team. I can see that, but still, Jordan understands the driving force that you brought behind that team. He understands that he probably would not have won those championship if it wasn't for you. But you need to understand that you weren't gonna win any championships without Michael Jordan, and that's for a fact. Any team that you would have went on prior to the Chicago Bulls trading for you. He was not going to win no championships. Probably would have been an afterthought. And then that proved forward when you went to the Houston Rockets to try to win a championship. It didn't work. You went to the Portland Trail Blazers. You were close, but you ran to Shaq and Kobe Lakers, and then you fell short, and then you retired. So that's your story in a nutshell as regards to that. But Scottie Pippen needs to understand that, you know, the past happened. You need to keep moving on. When you keep trying to bring up the past, all you're doing is you're bringing up old wounds, old dirt that you had, and people want to remember you as a six-time NBA championship, but when you keep trying to slander Jordan, slander Phil Jackson, or slander current players, 
they're gonna go back into your past and bring up your old dirt your old skeletons and it's just gonna make you look bad as a teammate and as a person overall because of how you conducting yourself right now in the media but those are my thoughts and opinions on the matter um this whole sky pivot breakdown um while it's, it was a little entertaining but it's kind of sad when you look at it because of you could tell Scottie Pippen is like holding on to all the hurt bitterness that he dealt with being with the Chicago Bulls, dealing with Jordan and all his, you know, all his foolishness. But still, uh, would you ask yourself, would you have dealt with Jordan and all that to win six championships or play on another team and win zero championships? That's a question you need to ask for yourself. But again, those are my thoughts and opinions on the matter. This is Edo Speaks out.